The next piece is your fuselage, your tail wing, your mast, and your tools and your hardware. What's even happening? There's just like parts everywhere. Let's simplify. What's up everyone, Sean Murray here and today we're gonna talk about foils. This here is a foil and it is pretty much my favorite thing to do in the water. So I wanna get you guys started so that you can enjoy an entirely new thing out on the water. It's amazing, so let's get started. This here is the Hyperlite Shuttle and it is a four five, which means four foot five inch. And it is a great board to get started and continue to progress in the sport of foil. I'm gonna show you how to set that up. Hyperlite has three foil setups. The Ute, which is a four five and a five O, so two different lengths you can get on that, which comes with the Commander 1300. We'll explain those numbers here in a little bit. And my current favorite setup right now is the Hyperlite Magic Carpet. This comes in two sizes, a 3.8 and a 4.4, and the Magic Carpet Mast and Wing. This whole setup is carbon fiber. It's super fast, super light, and it's a rocket ship. So this one is a pretty advanced board, but I really like it because it's very responsive and I can get around to a lot of different places. So this one is what's called a high speed wing. And we're gonna actually step back into the shuttle and the booster 1300 to get you guys started. So with the shuttle and booster 1300 kit, this is what you're going to receive. You've got your board and then the wing kit and the tools and the hardware are all in here. So first thing that I like to put together is the front wing. So the most recognizable piece of a foil is your front wing. This is a fiberglass and foam front wing that has a pretty deep cord. So it's actually really stable and uh, is great for learning. The next piece is your fuselage, your tail wing, your mast, and your tools and your hardware. So to name the parts, we've got your front wing, fuselage, tail wing, mast, and collar. Collar is what mounts to the board. So the first thing I like to do is build the wing. You want them pretty tight, so make sure you got them snug. I travel a lot, and so I'm breaking these down often. I'm not using any kind of Loctite. Just like my wakeboard setup, I check all of these screws in the hardware every time before I ride. This looks weird right now because I'm building it down here, but so I can see it. I'm not gonna build it up here right now. So I've mounted the front wing, tail wing, and the fuselage to the mast. So now we're gonna put the mast and the collar onto the board. First timers, move it back. Here's why you wanna move it back. Anytime people are learning to foil, they use the common position of getting up. When you're behind the boat, we tend to lean back against the line. And when you do that, it is going to make this thing rocket out of the water. So everyone, when they get going, has this kind of wheeling up out of the water. It stalls, what we call a breach, where you come up out of the water, there's no more water, and then it hits the water. The shuttle's really nice and forgiving because of the rocker in the nose. So when you have slap down, it bounces back and lets you reset. To help avoid that, moving this mass pretty far back can help with that. You also wanna just make sure that your back foot is standing over this mass when you're first learning. If you get behind it, it's going to continue to bounce out of the water. So like I'll, I'll normally put it about a finger's length from the tail of the board, but it really doesn't matter that much unless you're riding straps. If you're riding with the straps, your feet are gonna go where those straps are and you definitely need to make sure that you have this in the right spot for where you are standing. So there you have it. We now have the shuttle with the booster 1300 ready to hit the water. Now let's talk a little bit about some of those numbers, what they mean, and a few tips to get you out into the water. So 1300 on the wing is how many square centimeters that wing has. So 1300 is a pretty high number, which means it's stable. The Magic Carpet is a 1200, smaller, and it also is more of a high speed or high, slightly high aspect wing. 
so that it allows you to have uh, more glide with the wider wing and with that shorter cord, that front to fr the front edge of the wing to the back edge allows a little bit more speed. And also the Magic Carpet has a, a shorter fuselage. The length of the fuselage, the shorter it gets, the faster your pump can get. So imagine if you had a really long fuselage, it's really slow in its pump. The shorter you make it, the faster you can pump, getting speed, but it also makes it a little bit more sensitive. So that's why I think that this fuselage is really nice for learning because it's not going to climb super fast. The fuselage on the Magic Carpet is about 54 centimeters long and on the Commander as well as the Booster, it's about 60 centimeters long. So that length makes these things a bit more stable. So if you guys wanna check out another video on my channel, I'm gonna go into much more detail about how to get up when you're out on the water, but here's a few quick tips. Number one, foot placement is really key. So you wanna have your feet pretty far forward. Eventually when you're more experienced, your back foot's gonna sit in between these screws somewhere, especially depending where you put that mast. And then when you're learning, your front foot, get it ahead of these screws. These last sets of screws, that's where the straps will go. That's kind of the marker of, that's where your feet eventually are going to ride. But to keep this thing down, you've got to learn to keep it flat. So get your foot forward, okay? So it's gonna sit somewhere just in front of those screws when you're learning. Eventually you'll start to move it back. Now here's another reason I really like this board. This board is something that Hyperlite and I worked on on the shape and the size and rocker, but also most importantly is its neutral buoyancy. This thing is really easy to push underwater. The reason it makes it easier to get up is so when you push it underwater, you can stand on this thing without even the rope in your hand and learn to balance it underwater so that that wing is flying really flat. If you wanna start like a wake surfer where you pull the board up and you hold it against you, you're gonna have to hold it because the wing is gonna wanna make it go flat. So if you hold it up there, you can do that. Just know this, the wing will be in the water like this. And even if you start to get it like this, it is going to rock it out of the water and you're gonna get blasted or it's gonna push out from underneath you. There's a ton of power in this thing. The reason foiling is so different is because we are dealing with lift. What you have is you've got just this thing that is flying in the water and the water has so much density to it that this wants to climb in whatever direction that you are sending it. So the shuttle, allows you to push the board underwater so that the wing is actually starting in a flying position. So you're gonna be standing in the water, you're gonna grab the rope, and you're gonna just get a little bit of tension. When you do that, that is when it's game on and you want this thing to start flying. And like I said, I've got another video that will give you more details on how to get started on these things. I can't tell you how much fun it is riding these things. You have to just go experience it. And there's gonna be things that you don't understand until you feel it. You can try to explain it, but it's unreal because this is something that we've never done before. We've ridden on top of the water. You can even ride things kind of underwater, but this is a whole new experience because you have this up down climb and descent and you've got this banking feeling. And when you do all of this together, it's amazing. And then getting into the power of waves where they're pushing you, it's a whole new world. So I really encourage you guys to go check them out. If you guys have questions or comments for myself, you guys can put those below. I also encourage you to go check out hyperlight.com and you can see all of the different specs and how you can get your hands on one of these setups. If you guys like and share, I'm very grateful because this content can get out there that much more and more people can have a good time out on the water. If you don't subscribe, you can maybe consider doing that and you can hit the notification bell to know when videos are going live. No matter what you're doing, always enjoy your ride. Peace. Hey, and if you didn't know, these are some of my pro models over the years. I've been riding professionally since before 97. This was my first pro model, 1997. Those, I'm pretty old, but I still like having a good time. Peace. And this is kind of fun. I've got some new merch. I've got the SM logo and it says enjoy your ride on the back. I also have a long sleeve tee with a hoodie and can even use this thing as a sun shirt. Has the SM logo and enjoy your ride down the sleeve. Throw the hood up. And got this nice lightweight hoodie. Love this thing, enjoy your ride, SM logo. Pop the hood up. This thing is great, super comfortable. And just got this new SM sticker. 
really excited to have this stuff. So if you guys wanna go check out some of my merch, you guys can go to seanmurray.com, click on merch, and you can see a bunch of different things that I have there. Autograph cards, signature cards, postcards, uh, even some clear stickers that say enjoy your ride that I can personalize to you so that you can slap it on your board. It's like I signed your board. So, so thanks for checking that out. Enjoy your ride. Peace.